In this video, I'm going to take you through the new personal escape anchor hook from CMC. If you're familiar with the Crosby and the NARS, I would consider the CMC hook a hybrid between the two. And out of all the commercially made anchoring devices currently on the market, the CMC hook is not only the lightest weight, but it's also the strongest. It has a minimum braking strength of 25 kilonewtons, which equates to more than 5,600 pounds. CMC has the hook listed at 8 ounces, but on my scale, it actually came in under that at 7 and 7 eighths. It's made from a high strength aluminum alloy and is UL third party tested to exceed the NFPA 1983 rope rescue requirements for personal skate. The hook is 7 inches long by 4 and 3 quarter inches wide. And when you compare it to the size of the NARS and the Crosby, I would say the CMC hook is somewhere in the middle. Actually, the CMC hook is a lot closer to the size of the Crosby than it is the NARS. And to give you a better perspective of that, this is a CMC hook on top of the NARS and the Crosby on top of the CMC. Beyond the overall dimensions, another measurement that's important to be aware of is the distance from the spine of the hook to the point. On the CMC, this width is 3 inches, which is 3 eighths of an inch more than the NARS and a full 3 quarters of an inch greater than the Crosby. This increased width allows the point of the hook to get around the window framework so it can bite into the lath and plaster or sheetrock, giving the hook a better grab. Along with this, if the hook would shift, it can catch the lip of the framework, preventing the hook from completely sliding out of position. Versus when you look at the Crosby, it doesn't have the width to get around the framework and the point ends up being right on the edge. Taking a look at some of the other features of the CMC hook, at the base you have your captive eye. This is where you would attach your rope or webbing. You'll notice underneath the captive eye is flat stock. So when you tie your knot, it seats up against the base of the hook, preventing the rope or webbing from rotating out of position. Here you have the handle, and the handle simply allows additional versatility during anchoring. Basically, it makes it a lot easier to attach to a substantial object. I'll also use a handle for attaching an accessory carabiner for firefighter and civilian rescue applications, which I'll show you later. When you look at the overall versatility, strength, and weight of the CMC hook, it's pretty hard to beat. And I like it so much, I've actually switched over to it and completely reconfigured my system. So at this point, I'd like to show you some of the changes that I've made. The system on the left was my previous setup. You notice that the rope was attached to a Crosby hook with a figure eight knot, making what I refer to as a quick loop. Through that quick loop, I attached an accessory carabiner. Now this configuration pretty much covered the full spectrum of anchoring options and was a decent setup. But by switching over to the CMC hook, I was able to streamline my system, literally cut the weight in half while maintaining the same amount of versatility. Another change you may also notice is that the rope is attached to the hook with a barrel knot. Now I know someone's going to ask the question, isn't a figure eight knot a better way to go? And the answer to that is actually no. And that comes directly from one of CMC's lead rope rescue instructors. By running the rope or webbing through the cat of eye and tying the knot around the base of the hook, you're literally locking it in place, preventing any rotation of the hook during deployment. So by using a barrel knot, you're creating a more secure attachment and reducing bulk without compromising strength. So let's take a look at how to tie it. To start the knot, take the running end of your rope or webbing and come through the cat to via the hook. Then extend out about 12 inches of tail. Come around the standing part of the rope twice. So that's once, that's twice. Now I'm starting to form the knot. Can you see the two loops? Take the running end and come underneath both those loops. You should see an X and then the two stacked loops to form a barrel. At this point, grab the tail coming out of the knot on the bottom and top and lock it down around the standing part of the rope. You only need an inch to an inch and a half of tail. You can make it longer if you like, but it's not necessary. Remember your goal is to reduce bulk. When you get the knot where you want it, 
grab the standing part and the knot and draw it into the base of the hook. At this point, I'd recommend that you hang a piece of webbing from an anchor, hang your hook from that webbing, and sit in your system and load it. This will further lock the knot down around the base of the hook. Here's what you're looking for. This is a trainer where the system's been loaded and you can see once it has been that knot is literally locked around the base of the hook and there's no rotation or movement of that knot which is what you want. Now you may be questioning that little bit of tail that's coming out but you just have to trust it. This system has well over a hundred deployments and that tail hasn't slipped at all. And to free this knot you wouldn't be able to untie it. You literally have to cut it off the hook. So get your knot dressed out, hang your system, protect the hook, load it, and really get that knot tight around the base of the hook and you'll be good to go. There are a lot of different techniques for establishing an anchor. I'm going to take you through three of the main options. The first is attaching to a substantial object, something that will easily support your body weight and that's ideally close to your exit point. Now as long as your system is attached properly, this is one of your better options because you don't have to worry about the anchor failing or slipping out of position. To attach to a substantial object, wrap the hook around, insert a biter rope through the handle, come around the hook, and tension off the rope. If a substantial object isn't immediately available, another method is a tool in the wall technique. Now as long as the construction and the integrity of the wall will allow it, this is a viable option and a very strong anchor. It's imperative though that you have a clear understanding of when this technique will work and when it won't. When all the elements are in place to support it, this is a great alternative. Take a biter rope through the handle of the hook, then place a tool through this loop and insert it into the wall 6 inches to the side of the window and 12 to 18 inches above the sill. Finally, if you're pinned at the window with no other alternative, you can use your tool, hook, or similar device, place it in the corner of the window, and use it as a last ditch anchor. It's important to understand that this technique relies on what's called friction and tension control. And what I mean by that is you need to have positive friction or contact with the surface that you're applying your anchor to, and you need to maintain tension from that friction or contact point to your belt or harness until your system is fully loaded before you can safely let go of the anchor. If you let slack in your system and let go of your hook, tool, or similar device too soon, it could slip out of position and the end result could be catastrophic. So it's imperative that you maintain anchor discipline and proper friction and tension control. Out of all the anchoring techniques, this one requires the most practice to implement safely. So with that being said, I'd highly recommend that you train on windows with a smooth fascia. On all our props, whether they're portable or in a fixed facility, we skin the anchoring points with Brazilian ironwood. It's extremely dense and one of the hardest woods out there. So if you can manage your anchor on this material, you're going to be ahead of the game. Training exclusively on windows with a projected sill doesn't prepare you for the worst case scenario. Obviously, if we encounter them in the field, we're definitely going to take advantage of them. They're a bunny or a bonus because they help prevent the hook from sliding out of position. But during training, we should prepare ourselves for the harder situation, not the easier one. You have three options for placing the CMC hook, which is based on construction and your comfort level. Flat, on a 45, or in line, which works best for a projected sill. To maintain proper friction and tension of your anchor, Hook your inside leg to help control your exit, and don't let go of the hook until your system's fully loaded. First, make sure your DCD clears the sill. This is referred to as punching out. If you're controlling the anchor with your left hand, hook your left leg. The opposite of this would be right hand, right leg.